We are talking with Neil Kramer today, and we've been talking all about truth. Yes, and I got another question for you here. Um, you were talking about something called um, the empire, um, something you call this in your work. Can you tell us what uh, what the empire is? Sure. Empire is very important to understand because if we if people don't know what this is, uh, a lot of things don't make sense because we have all this amazing spiritual uh, development available to us individually and together, and yet there's this prevailing weird force in the world that ought not to be ignored. Different people call it different things. Uh, there's all sorts of funny words for this this force, but I call it empire. Um, empire is an, an ethos of containment, basically. And it is also a set of doctrines. It's also a group of people. Uh, people that attempt to restrict and contain humankind to a lower state of being. And if you don't want to be too massively conspiratorial about it, it's simply because they're easier to control <laughs> when they're contained to a lower state of being. They just do what they're told, and people don't think too much about stuff. So if you just mm. want to keep it simple, it's just to make rulers' jobs easier, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But from a, a spiritual keep perspective, keep the sheep in line, that's right. From a spiritual perspective, um, it's a bit different, and we can and should look a bit deeper than that. So I'd say that the the job of empire is to diminish humans mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And it, it sort of profoundly um, conditions people to esteem the collective over the individual. That's its primary purpose. It says the collective is number one and the individual is virtually meaningless. That's why they're so hot on anti-discrimination because the individual is all about excellent discrimination and so to make discrimination an, a nasty thing is very clever and people are almost thinking oh i'm not i don't want to judge i don't want to discriminate the whole business of the individual is to make judgments and to discriminate so they use all these clever methods that then we sort of start to you know hit ourselves with them you know like in the old days monks would birch themselves you know and they'd wear like a little silice on the thigh to cut into them to mortify the flesh and remind themselves of how pathetic they are and, you know, all this rubbish. And it's like a sort of media version of that. It's like positive discrimination and negative discrimination and political correctness and all this. It's, it's a construct that surrounds us in modern life. It's a ridiculous thing where everyone is forced into commerce as a way of life. You are, we are, everyone is, compelled to transact with the system with all this silly money and permits and licenses and taxes and statutes and codes and nonsense. And most of that is not designed to help men and women grow and be happy and creative, but instead it's to squeeze them, to squeeze <laughs> people, to create this underlying constant low hum of anxiety and lack and it works and you know seven billion people lost in the construct of empire disconnected totally from their own natural beauty and their total excellence and divine origin disregarded in in the as i say the masochistic misery of empire and i, I could go on to say how it's all built in that but i know we've got a brief segment here perhaps we can do that another time but it's here the empire is a real thing it's in the movies and media Government, CNN, BBC, New York Times, The Telegraph, Disney, Hollywood. It's in elementary school, it's in high school, it's in college. God-awful careers in finance and futures and stocks and brainwashing and liberalism and Marxism and fake racism, fake sexuality, fake war, all sorts of hideousness like that. But here's the punchline. The real purpose of empire in advanced spiritual practice is that we created it for ourselves. Its purpose, like Frankenstein's monster, is to kick our spiritual butts into action. So we drifted a long time ago, and we were lazy, and we forgot. And so we had this wonderful idea to make this very real-feeling monster, this theater, to propel ourselves into self-determination, to take control, first of self then of our communities, and then of everything, which we, we don't do at the present time. So empire drives us into our own original supreme authority, 
Like, we are the creators here through that system we talked about, self, soul, solar. We made this. So we forgot. So we made a terrible, even though ultimately illusory, adversary to awaken us. We made a terrible adversary to awaken us. And it works really quite well, if you think about it, to the point now where I would say, though, that Empire is preparing to leave this world. Prior to the next Earth change, which is totally natural and perfect, and then we are left and will be left, as we have done before, to govern ourselves once again. So it's a very exciting piece of theatre, even this, you know, seeming unpleasantness of empire. Why is everything so corrupt? Because we needed it to force self-determination. Now we've nearly got sufficient numbers. You only need a few thousand. We've nearly got them all, all of them. And then the earth change comes. Perfect, cyclical, natural, cleansing, perfect, 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 all the time, just like a forest fire, part of the lifetime of the great forest is to burn down from time to time. So it is with the world. And when that comes, you get this gear shift, total gear shift. So it's never catastrophic. It's always purification in the very best and most excellent sense. When that comes, empire's out of here. 